Hello, welcome Ready to Writers. I'm so glad you found me here in the classroom and I know many of you turn up every day because you want to improve your writing. What do we do in the Super Sentence Stackers classroom? Well, my name is Mrs Considine and I am your writing guide. We use pens or pencils and a piece of paper to let words take flight and we build super sentences together because we are the super sentence stackers. Welcome to the classroom. What do I need you to do? Well, if you're here, ready to write and want to improve your writing, then I am going to help you. I need you to be thinking. I need you to be worrying about words. I want you to really think about the words you are choosing so that your writing is sharp and vivid. But a really important part in the classroom is that you listen because as you listen to Mrs Considine, you are going to be able to improve your writing. Okay, everybody, we are now going to celebrate a gorgeous piece of writing we had last week. Toby is only seven years old and he has produced some wonderful work last week linked to our film one man band. So what we're going to do now is have a little look at Toby's writing to see how he got on. I'm going to read it to you. What I want you to notice is his language. Okay, one man band. Here we go. The two battling musicians revealed their weapons. Their instruments clashed like swords in a battle and the music was as loud as cannons. Tippy watched the beautiful battle as the two enemies moved closer and closer. It was a lovely orchestra of sounds and Tippy thought mm, it was an unbearable, never-ending fight. What I can see there in Toby's work is that he has really thought about this battle analogy and all of his work has words to do with battle. I want you to notice this, look, clashed, swords, cannon. It's such an amazing piece of work, Toby. I'm so proud of you and this is really what happens in the Super Sentence Stacker classroom. Children's writing improves. We enjoy it. And I really want you to enjoy your writing today. And one of the things that's going to really help you is getting ready to write. And how do we get ready to write? We get ready by making sure we have a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. And Mrs C is particularly interested in notes, jottings, words, or word collectors make great writers. So thank you Toby, you are a star, but I'm on the lookout for writing stars all the time. In fact, when you hand your writing in today at 12.30, if you catch my eye, and how you catch my eye is with your precious words, then I might be celebrating your work. Okay, what is today's film? Well, today's film is Belly Flop. And if you look in the link below, uh, in the description, you'll see a link to the film. I want you to watch that film, but I don't want you to watch it yet. Um, I want you to listen first, and I want you to jot. I want you to listen because I want us to be really good word collectors. 
So by the time you watch the film, you'll have a whole vocabulary vault of language. So the writing will be smoother, sharper, easier. I'm here to help you. So I don't want you to worry. I want us to enjoy the process. And I'm gonna talk you through how we work in the Super Sentence Stackers classroom. I know some of you know this, but we do have new pupils and grown-ups every single day. Okay, in the link below is a sheet you can download if you want to, because it could help you. And it is a called uh, Choose Your Chunk. And this is where I'm tasking you to choose one small part of the film. Mrs. C never wants you to write the whole film, just one little chunk. And I'm going to let you know that I'm interested, actually, I'm going to write for this chunk. Uh, plot point three or chunk three. Now I know that, I'm going to notice really closely the times of these chunk. Uh, 55 seconds to 1 minute 22. I'm going to stay within those time boundaries because I know many of your teachers uh, want you to stay in those time boundaries because they're going to sew it all together as a class story. Some of you, I'm just your teacher and I then can read it as a story. Okay, so let's just have a recap of important information. First thing you need to do when you've watched the film is choose a chunk and Mrs C is going to choose chunk three. A very important thing to do after that is to put your name on your piece of paper. So I'm going to write my name here, Mrs Considine. I'm going to write my age down and I need to know your age as well. And then I'm going to write down chunk three so you know I'm writing within that chunk. Super sentence stackers always works like this. I task you to write nine sentences and I also challenge you to include three very specific lenses, aspects, writing techniques that we're going to have a go at. Some of them might be new and some of them might be aspects we've done before and they're coming back again. What I'd like you to do now is use your time to go and find a piece of paper. I've got my paper so I'm just going to tick that off. I'm going to then ask you to find a pencil or a pen. I've got mine, so I'm going to tick that off. And when you've got a piece of paper and a pencil, this is now the most crucial part of the Super Sentence Stackers classroom. Why is it crucial? Because your job now is to gather ideas, jottings, notes, vocabulary words, initial ideas, thesaurus thinking, so that you place to begin to get your language to glow and sparkle off the page. What you are going to see from Mrs C is my thinking. And in a moment, I'm going to show you my thinking. But before I do that, I'm going to let you know what today's writing challenges are. I always choose them from the rainbow and many of you have rainbows in your classroom. Some of you have rainbows in your house. Oh, that does make me smile. So, here are today's writing challenges. Firstly, we are going to write a complex sentence. We're going to write a complex sentence where we're going to embed in between two commas 
a relative clause and that relative clause is going to begin with the word who. We're going to say more information about a character. I'm going to help you do that, so don't worry. The second writing challenge is going to be repetition. We're going to take a word or a phrase and we're going to repeat it for effect. And we're going to do that three times. It's very common that story writers, just to make it obvious, uh, it is repetition. They like words to come in threes. <laughs> A bit like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. That's what I always think of. And the third writing challenge is we are going to zoom into sound. We're going to make sound a really important part. Those are our writing challenges. Okay, everybody. Now you've got a piece of paper and a pencil or a pen. You are going to listen. You're going to see my thinking. You're going to see me tussle and tussle with words. You're going to th see me choose. Think about which words are good for the job. And you're going to look inside the writer's brain. You're also going to see me reject words words that aren't good enough or aren't quite precise enough. You're going to see the teachers thinking, I'm going to make it as visible as possible and you're going to be under my stewardship. Okay. Here we go. Please jot with me. We're going to be a thinking pens and pencils up community, a little writing family. And do you know what I would love to see? I'd love to see your notes and your writing. Do you know, those jottings, those notes, that thinking is just as special I really do love seeing your thinking prior to writing. Okay, I'm thinking about chunk three and I'm going to make some notes to help me so I don't lose my way. Um, oh, I best tell you what our main character is called. I got excited then. Our main character is called Penny. She is the girl at the pool who is getting excited to try new things. We're going to write a third person narrative. So we're going to use words like she, pronouns in fact, she and they. As I think about chunk three, I'm going to write um, diving board. That is really going to be important because she is having a go at jumping off the diving board. I'm going to write down jumping. I'm going to write down the word brave. I'm going to write down the word conquer because she's not very good at it yet, but she's going to try and conquer it. So I think that's going to be a really important word. Oh, conquer. It's a strange word that I'm looking in the middle of the word, but I have learned that. I know that's right. I'm going to start my writing now and I'm going to also think about this idea that I'm going to add in more information inside a clause starting with the word who. So let me begin with the character. We never want to drift too far away from a central character. Penny, that's her name. Then I'm going to put in a comma and I'm going to say some information about her. I know she is a very brave girl. I can see that in the film. And I've already got the word brave here to help me. So I'm going to write that down. Who was brave and, and I really want to hit it home, um, that 
she kind of never gives up. Um, I'm going to gather some ideas, I think, on my thesaurus thinking board. Uh, she's determined. Oh, that's a good word. Determined. I'm going to write that down. She is persistent. <laughs> persistent. I like that word. Uh, she's fearless. She is courageous. Mm. They're all good words. I'm going to reject courageous because I've already used brave. Um, but I do like determined. Let me go back to my writing. Penny, who was brave and determined. Kind of, she doesn't give up. I like that about her. She keeps trying. I can put the comma in there now and I've got an embedded clause. I've added more information about her. Made a decision to dive. A decision, oh, decision to dive. I think I've spelt that right. I might need to check that in a moment. We always need to be a brave speller, a try your best speller. That's quite a long sentence now, just to get some rhythm. Um, and actually to almost replicate what she does. It's sharp, it's sudden, she jumped. That's a good idea, she jumped. That's a really clever thing to do as a writer. Create and build a long sentence and Snuggle it up with a really short, sharp sentence. It shows you've got good control between long and short, long and short. It's good, isn't it? Um, mm, but it doesn't work out for her. I need to tell the reader now, this isn't an elegant jump. It isn't a perfect dive. Um, I need to gather some ideas to get me going. Um, I'm going to write down the word movement. Um, I'm going to write down doesn't work. I'm not going to write doesn't work in my writing. It's too chatty, but it's what I want to uh, say. I'm going to write down the leap. I might need other words for jump. I'm going to have a little think. So back to the writing now. She jumped. She got the... Um, should I say action or technique? Or so? I'm going to go to my thesaurus thinking board. Um, I'm, I need some words that mean action. So let me have a little think. Um, let me gather some of those. Um, action, not quite right, but let me write it down. It's okay. The action, the technique. These are all in the same synonym family. Oh, manoeuvre. Oh, that is a really tricky word, manoeuvre. Manoeuvre. It's spelled differently in different countries. Um, technique, action, manoeuvre, execution. The execution of the dive. Oh, that's good. Hmm. I think I like technique. Back to the writing. She jumped. She got the technique. I'm thinking now about repetition for effect. I'm going to repeat a word or phrase here. Repetition. She got the technique wrong. <laughs> I think wrong is going to be my word I'm going to emphasise. I could put a full stop here, but I want to join it all up together, join these clauses, and I want something a little bit more humorous than a comma. Um, so I'm going to use a dash. Dash can really work in kind of casual, more humorous writing to join ideas. She got the technique wrong. Um, I'm just going to say uh, here, just slightly. <laughs> uh, 
enough to make um, the angle wrong. You see how I've used wrong again? Then I'm going to put in another dash so I've got my third point. Repetition often comes in threes. I'm going to go back and reread that. She got the technique wrong, just slightly enough to make the angle wrong. And then I'm going to repeat that again, just slightly enough, just slightly enough to make the entry point hit in the water. The entry point, I'm going to go now with very wrong, very for emphasis, very wrong. Then Mrs C has got three wrongs. <laughs> and two slightly enough. Oh, that really lives beautifully together. All joined up with that more kind of casual dash idea. I like it. Um, and then I want something very dramatic. I'm doing that kind of long, short, long, short idea. I'm going to do this flop. <laughs> flop, onomatopoeia, crash, splash. They're all good. Flop's good. Um, I'm now thinking about sound. I know I've got the flop, but I just want to not leave it there. I want to extend sound. Uh, I'm going to make some notes here. It's a belly flop. Let's state the obvious. Uh, it's a fail. It's hard. It's epic, <laughs> but not in a good way. Um, sounds. Let's really hit this home now. A hard, echoey, I like that. A hard, echoey splash. And then I want some sound words. Rang, that's good, isn't it? I don't know if it's the best one though. Let's go to the thesaurus thinking board. Uh, let's think about sounds. Here we go. Thank you all those people who are jotting along with me. All the words I've rejected, they might be the most perfect words for your writing. Um, rang, vibrated, that's in the same synonym family. Resounded, mm. reverberated reverberated. <laughs> That's a good one. I love how your phonics just helps you spell that perfectly. Reverberated. Uh, I like reverberated. A hard echoey splash. Reverberated. Around the pool side. And then I can finish with an adverb. Around the pool side loudly, dramatically. Oh, I like loudly. I'm going to go back and reread this now. Here we go. And I'm just going to have a look at if I met the targets. Um, Penny, who was brave and determined, made a decision to dive. She jumped. Love that short sentence there. She got the technique wrong, dash. Well, don't say dash, Mrs C, but I'm just <laughs> so excited by it. Um, it's how I'm building the repetition. Let me go back. She got the technique wrong, just slightly enough to make the angle wrong, just slightly enough to make the entry point very wrong. Flop, a hard echoey splash, reverberated around the pool side loudly. Um, just check in there my spelling on some words. Echoey. Mm, that is one which I need to have a look at. Has it got an E in or not? You know, I'm not sure. So I am going to look and think. I'm going to check 
echoey. Here we go. I think it's going to be this, but before I finalise my writing, I'm going to double check that, but I think it's got an E in it. A hard echoey splash reverberated around the poolside loudly. Remember, if you're not sure, I don't want you not to use those words. You must, because writers always go back and check. Okay, everybody, thank you for listening in the classroom. I'm setting you off now to write. The challenge is to choose a chunk and then write within those time boundaries. I want you to include nine sentences if you can. Up to nine, but definitely not more than nine. Your writing challenges today are a relative clause with who dropped in. I'd also then like you to have a go at repetition for effect, repeating a word three times nearby. And the third challenge is, can you drench? Oh, sorry for that water pun. I've got so excited with all this belly flopping. Can you include lots of sounds in your story? maybe even an onomatopoeic word. <laughs> Thank you for being here. You really do cheer me up every day and I'd love to choose your work to celebrate tomorrow. Get your writing into me by nine, or oh, not nine, by 12.30 and make sure you add the hashtag super sentence stackers. You can hand it into Instagram you can hand it into Facebook, Jane Constein Education. You can hand it in on Twitter. I love seeing your work and I try and comment on as many as I can. So super sentence stackers, please be back here tomorrow at quarter to ten. And then you'll be able to see if I've chosen your writing. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye.